income tax 2022-2023 rental property personal use dwelling used as a home and reporting income and deductions let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation most of this information comes from publication 527 residential rental property including rental of vacation homes tax year 2022 you can find on the irs website irs.gov irs.gov support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it looking at the income tax formula we're focused on line one income remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement but just an outline other forms and schedules flowing into these line items for example the schedule e in essence an income statement in and of itself with rental income minus rental expenses the net rental income in essence rolling into line one income of the income tax formula we're now continuing on with these more complex type of situations where there might be a personal use component with the rental property remembering that with rental property as with business kind of activities we'd like to keep it separate from the personal activities that helps us to do the bookkeeping helps us to do planning budgeting into the future and helps us of course with the tax preparation but sometimes we have to some co-mingling kind of situations happen in which case most of the rules that we talked about in prior presentations when we focused on just a piece of property that's used for rental exclusively will still apply but now we have to un uh, separate out parse out the business and personal oftentimes when we have uh, these types of situations and that's what we're continuing on with here so what is a day of personal use so a day of personal use of a dwelling unit is any day that the unit is used by any of the following persons. So we've talked about in prior presentations, breaking out the days that are for personal use so we can uh, do some of these calculations in terms of whether it is uh, qualified as a home. And then of course, we need to be breaking out the, the expenses between personal and business. Okay, number one you or any other person who owns an interest in it unless you rent it to another owner as your main home under a share equity financing agreement defined later uh, however see days used as a main home before or after renting later number two a member of your family or a member of the family of any other person who owns an interest in it unless the family member uses the dwelling unit as their main home and pays a fair rental price so obviously when we're thinking about personal use if we personally use the property that's pretty straightforward but if we have some family member or someone like that that's using the property if they're paying the fair price then you would think okay now it's it's still like a business transaction that gets messy because then we have to think about what the fair price is and so on and so forth because it's not an arm's length transaction because they're a relative uh and if they're if they're not paying the fair price then you're thinking it could be counting towards the personal use day uh at that point so family includes only your spouse sibling half sibling uh ancestors parents grandparents etc and lineal descendants children uh, grandchildren etc number three anyone under an arrangement that lets you use some other dwelling unit and number four anyone uh, at less than a fair rental price and number four is kind of a catch-all for all of these items because obviously you would think that a, the the telltale an indicator that it's it's a uh, for personal use as opposed to uh, a rental type of situation is that you're not getting the fair price right so if you if you rent it to a family member uh then they might have a, a lesser price and you wouldn't have the fair price so that's some of those could be somewhat redundant and you might be able to distill it down to in essence 
Number four at least being the major indicating factor that something funny is going on. Main home. So if the other person or member of the family in one or two has more than one home, their main home is ordinarily the one they lived in most of the time. So now we have a situation of needing to figure the main home type of situation. What does that mean if you're living in multiple places? Well, we're going to say it's the one you lived in most of the time. So shared equity financing agreement. So this is an agreement under which two or more persons acquire undivided interest for more than 50 years in an entire dwelling unit, including the land and one or more of the co-owners is entitled to occupy the unit as their main home uh, upon payment of rent to the other co-owners. All right, donation of use of the property. You use a dwelling unit for personal purposes if you donate the use of the unit uh, to a charitable organization. So now you're not renting it out. You're, based, you're, you're donating it to a charitable organization. The organization sells the use of the unit at a fundraising event and the purchaser uses the unit. So examples, the following examples show how to determine if you have days of personal use. Example number one, you and your neighbor or co-owners of a condominium at the beach last year. You rented the unit uh, to vacationers whenever possible. The unit wasn't used as a main home by anyone. So you've got this vacation type of home and it's, it's not anyone's principal residence because everyone that's basically lived in it or used it has some other place basically that is, is their principal residence because they've lived there longer <laughs> for that year than this place. All right, your neighborhood used the unit for two weeks last year. Your neighbor used the unit for two weeks last year. You didn't use you didn't use it at all because your neighbor has an interest in the unit. Both you both of you are considered to have used the unit for personal purposes during those two weeks because of course the neighbor is a co-owner. So example two. You and your neighbor are co-owners of a house under a shared equity financing arrangement. Your neighbors, uh, your neighbors live in the house and pay you a fair rental price. Even though your neighbors have an interest in the house, the days your neighbors live there aren't counted as days of personal use by you. This is because your neighbors rent the house as their main home under a shared equity financing arrangement. Example three. You own rental property that you rent to your son. So now we've got this relationship kind of weird situation, which is common, but obviously throws a wrench into things. Your son doesn't own any interest in this property. He uses it as his main home and pays you a fair rental price. Your son's use of the property isn't personal use uh, by you because your son is using it as his main home. He owns no interest in the property and he is paying you a fair rental price. So when we're dealing with family situations, a father son type of situation, this is where it gets kind, kind of messy because you have to determine these types of things. So, so obviously if we think about this again, you got the son living there. So uh, uh, is using it as his main home. He owns no interest in the property. So the son doesn't own the property. So it looks like a legitimate rental situation from that perspective. And then of course the key one here, he is paying you a fair rental price. What does a fair rental price mean? Well, it's tough to determine because all rental property is unique, but you can think that you can have a fair rental price by appraising it, comparing it to other uh, similar type rentals. Example four, you rent your beach house in, uh, to Rosa. Rosa rents her cabin in the mountains to you. So now you're saying, hey, Rosa, I got a beach house. And Rosa's like, I've got a cabin and we can kind of swap the rental usages, right? So you each pay a fair rental price. You are using your beach house for personal purposes on the days that Rosa uses it because, uh, because your house is used by Rosa under an arrangement that allows you to use her cabin. Example five. You rent an apartment to your mother at less than a fair rental price. And now you've got this whole family member thing here again. You're like, come on, mom, you got to pay me the fair market price here. But no, she's not going to do She's going to less than the fair market price. 
So you are using the apart uh, you are using the apartment for personal personal purposes on the days that your mother rents it because you rent it for less than a fair rental price. So days used for repairs and maintenance. So any day that you spend working substantially full time repairing and maintaining, not improving, your property isn't counted as a day of personal use. So if you're putting time into the property to repair it, you're not really personally using it. You're trying to uh, fix it. So it's not going to be included for personal use, which is not. So don't count such a day as a day of personal use, even if family members use the property for recreational purposes on the same day. So even if your family members are hanging out, having some drinks or whatever, but you're sitting there working on the house. Example, Corey owns a cabin in the mountains that he rents for most of the year. He spends a week at the cabin with family members. Corey works on maintenance of the cabin three or four hours each day during the week and spends the rest of the time fishing, hiking, and relaxing. Corey's family members, however, work substantially full-time on the cabin each day during the week. The main purpose of being at the cabin that week is to do maintenance work. Therefore, the use of the cabin during the week by Corey and his family won't be considered personal use by Corey. Okay. Days used as a main home before or after renting. So for purposes of determining whether a dwelling unit was used as a home, uh, you may not have to count days you use the property as your main home before or after renting it or offering it for rent as days of personal use. Don't count them as days for personal use if you rented or tried to rent the property for 12 or more consecutive months or you rented or tried to rent the property for a period of less than 12 consecutive months and the period ended because you sold or exchanged the property. However, this special rule doesn't apply when dividing expenses between rental and personal use. So you've got these different components when you're trying to calculation, be, whether it's a home use and then the calculations for dividing between personal and rental use uh, calculations. All right, example one. On February 28, 2021, you moved out of the house you had lived in for six years because you accepted a job in another town. You rented your house at a fair rental price from March 15, 2021 to May 14, 2022, 14 months. On June 1st, 2022, you moved back into your old house. Uh, the days you used the house as your main home from January 1st to February 28, 2021, and from June 1st to December 31st, 2022, aren't counted as days of personal use. Therefore, you would use the rules in chapter one when figuring your rental income and expenses. Example two, on January 31st, you moved out of the condominium where you had lived for three years. You offered it for rent at a fair rental price beginning on February. You were unable to rent it until April. On September 15th, you sold the condominium. The days you used the condominium as your main home from January 1st to January 31st aren't counted as days of personal use when determining whether you used it as a home. Examples. The following examples show how to determine whether you used your rental property as a home. Example one, you converted the basement of your home into an apartment with a bedroom, a bathroom, and a small kitchen. You rented the basement apartment at a fair rental price to college students during the regular school year. You rented to them a nine month lease, 273 days. You figured 10% of the total days rented to others at a fair rental price is 27 days. During June, June 30 days, your brother stayed with you and lived in the basement apartment rent free. So now we have this relationship situation again. Your basement apartment was used as a home because you used it for personal purposes for 30 days. Rent free use by your brothers in considering personal use. So the, the personal use by the brother would be considered as part of that, as, as part of that, right? So your personal use, 30 days is more than the, more than the greater of 14 days or 10% of the total days it was rented, 27 days. Example two, 
You rented the guest bedroom in your home at a fair rental price during the local college's homecoming, commencement, and football weekend, a total of 27 days. Your sister-in-law stayed in the room rent-free for the last three weeks, 21 days in July. You figured 10% of the total days rented to others at a fair rental price is three days. So the room was used as a home because you used it for personal purposes for 21 days. That is more than, than the greater of 14 days or 10% of the 27 uh, days it was rented, three days. Example three, you own a condominium apartment in a resort area. You rented it at a fair rental price for a total of 170 days during the year. For 12 of these days, the tenant wasn't able to use the apartment and allowed you to use it even though you didn't refund any of the rent. Your family actually used the apartment for 10 of those days. Therefore, the apartment is treated as having been rented for 160, which is the 170 minus the 10 days, you figured 10% of the total days rented to others at a fair rental price is 16 days. Your family also used the apartment for seven other days during the year. You used the apartment as a home because you used it for personal purposes for 17 days. That is more than the greater of 14 days or 10% uh, of the 160 days it was rented 16 days. All right, minimal. The minimal rental use. If you use the dwelling unit as a home and you rent it less than 15 days during the year, the period isn't treated as a rental activity. So now you've got your home and you're saying, I, I rented, but less than uh, 15 days. Well, then the IRS is going to say, well, that, maybe that's going to be immaterial. Again, the IRS might be doing that in part because if you only rented it for 15 days, your income uh, might be fairly small and you might have more expenses <laughs> than than income in that situation. So you can see used as a home but rented less than 50 days later for more information. Limit on deductions. Renting a dwelling unit that is considered uh, a home isn't passive activity. Instead, if your rental expenses are more than your rental income, some or all of the expenses uh, can't be used to offset income from other sources. So once again, renting a dwelling unit that is considered a home isn't a passive activity. Instead, it is your uh, if your rental expenses are more than your rental income, so that means you're at a loss situation again, which is really where everything gets messy with the IRS because they don't they don't well, they want your income they don't want to pay you for losses some or all of the asset excess expenses can't be used to offset income from other sources the excess expenses that can't be used to offset income from other sources are carried forward to the next year and treated as rental expenses for the same property any expenses carried forward to the next year will be subject to any limits that apply for that year so you have this similar kind of activity that we saw with the losses where they're gonna say, we're gonna restrict the losses and you might be able to take them in the future, but we're gonna restrict them to, in this case, the same activity. So this limit will apply to expenses carried forward to another year, even if you don't use the property as your home for that subsequent year. So if you convert the property and, and aren't using it as your home, do you just lose the expenses? Well, no, you would think it would be reasonable to still be able to take the expenses for the same property in the second year, even if it's not your principal home in that time. So to figure your deductible rental expenses for this year and any carryover to the next year, you can use worksheet 5-1 uh, and you can check that out in the publication. Reporting income and deductions. Property not used for personal purposes. If you don't use a dwelling uh, unit for personal purposes, see chapter three for how to report your rental income and expenses. Property used for personal purposes. If you do use a dwelling unit for personal purposes, then how you report your rental income and expenses depends on whether you use the dwelling unit as a home. So that's where that's where this calculations come in. That's why we have to be breaking this out of whether it's not it's used as a home with all these examples we've been taking a look at. So not used as a home. What if it's not used as a home? 
uh, if you use a dwelling unit for personal purposes, but not as a home, report all the rental income, report all the, the uh, rental income in your home. Because you use the dwelling unit for personal purposes, you must divide your expenses between the rental use and personal use as described earlier in, chap uh, in this chapter under dividing expenses. So obviously the income side of things is you don't have to divide that out because it's only going to it's only going to be rental income you're not going to have personal income the expenses you're going to have to divide out using uh, what we talked about in a prior presentation for dividing expenses so the expenses for personal use aren't deductible as rental expenses although you might be able to deduct them on like a schedule a or something uh you might you know you could take a look at that but we're focused here on the rental side of things so personal stuff typically not deductible rental stuff possibly deductible on the schedule e your deductible rental expenses can be more than your gross rental income however see limits on rental losses in chapter three so we have the same kind of situation now you have the rental property if you're into the loss situations then you've, you've got the possible limitations that we covered in chapter three, if you want to take a look at the publications, which we looked at in prior presentations. Used as a home, but rented less than 15 days. If you use a dwelling unit as a home and you rent it less than 15 days during the year, its primary function isn't considered to be rental and shouldn't be reported on schedule E. So now we're under that 15 day threshold. We're not going to be using the schedule E. You aren't required to report <coughs> report rental income and rental expenses from the activity. So you might think, well, the IRS has given you a break on this, but they're probably again, they're probably saying the IRS is probably thinking, well, if you rented it less than 15 days, you got rental income, but you probably have expenses that are equal to or greater than that because the rental income is going to be fairly small. So they're so th that's why they might be saying we're not going to bother with that. Right? So any expenses related to the home, such as mortgage interest, property taxes, and any qualified casualty loss will be reported as normally allowed on Schedule A. So now if it's your principal home and you're under that threshold, you'd say, well, I can't deduct it on the Schedule E because it's under that 15 day. So therefore, I'm going to just see if I can take it on a Schedule A as itemized deductions if my itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction and so see instructions for the schedule a for more information on deducting these expenses i used a home and rented 15 days or more so now you have it used as a home and you rented for more than that de minimis amount that small amount the 15 days so if you use a dwelling unit as a home and rented it 15 days or more during the year, include all your rental income in your income because you used a dwelling unit for personal purposes. Our purpose. You must divide your expenses between rental use and the personal use as described earlier in this chapter under dividing expenses. The expenses for personal use aren't deductible as rental expenses. If you had a net profit from the renting, the dwelling unit for the year, it is uh, your rental income is more than the total expenses, including depreciation, deduct all your rental uh, expenses. So obviously if you have an income situation, the, the IRS is like, okay, great, give us part of it. So, so you don't need to use worksheet 5.1. However, if you had a net loss from renting the dwelling, Here's where, here's where it, the problem happens, the losses. That's where the IRS gets upset. Dwelling during the year, your deduction for certain rental expenses is limited. To figure your deductible rental expenses and any carryover to next year, you could use Worksheet 5.1. You can see that in the publication.